This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1577, Eight Tips for Saving Big and Retiring Earlier, part two, by Darrow Kirkpatrick of caniretireyet.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. Happy 4th of July if you're in the US. This is the show where I read to you from some of the best personal finance blogs on the planet, sometimes a little too enthusiastically. But I can't help it. Money is an incredible resource that we can use to craft the life of our dreams. So thanks for joining me today and every day. And before we get to it, have you subscribed to our other podcasts? We cover personal development and minimalism, health, relationships, entrepreneurship, and life advice on the other shows. Just search for Optimal Living Daily wherever you get your podcasts to find them. Now, today's post is a continuation from yesterday. So if you're new here, I'd recommend listening to yesterday's episode first. But if you're all caught up, let's hear part two and continue optimizing your life. Eight Tips for Saving Big and Retiring Earlier, part two, by Darrow Kirkpatrick of caniretireyet.com. Number five, fine tune your food. Food is the most frequent major expense and it's intimately tied up with health. Awareness pays dividends. Simplify meals, buy in bulk, find recipes online for what's on sale, eat lower on the food chain, monitor your pantry and fridge to control waste, see what's nearing expiration and consume it before it goes bad. Cook at home more. Is there an expensive prepared food that you just love? Develop your own recipe. It will likely be cheaper and healthier for you. We've done that for energy bars and fancy tea drinks with great success. If you find you're spending a lot on groceries, break it down, analyze a few grocery bills and find out where the money is going. In our case, we realized we were spending too much on expensive juice drinks and we were letting fresh produce go to waste. By concentrating on those and other areas, we were able to reduce our grocery bill by about 20% over a year's time. Keep a petty cash purse for dining out or similar activities. If you want to forego cash, you can use one or more debit or money cards to control spending in certain budget categories. Replenish monthly with your budgeted amount. When that cash or card runs out, you're done in that category for the month. Number six, tune up transportation. It's liberating to disconnect your self-image from your vehicle. Drive modest vehicles, purchase used if possible instead of the latest hot models. Smaller vehicles cost less upfront, consume less gas, are easier to drive and park, and can still earn high safety ratings. Buying used means you miss the punishing first year of depreciation. Maintain vehicles well, do it yourself when possible, or use a local mechanic instead of the dealer. And drive those vehicles longer. Most modern vehicles can give reliable service well after turning 100,000 miles, if properly cared for. When something major goes wrong, carefully evaluate the repair or replacement decision. It often makes economic sense to do major repairs even on older vehicles, especially if you can get a warranty on the work. Downsize your vehicle count. Do without that extra vehicle. Share, carpool, or use public transportation. Bike and scooter where practical. When I retired, I gave up having my own car and now share one with my wife. I expected that to be hard emotionally and practically. It wasn't. It's no big deal to schedule my trips around hers. And it's great having one less vehicle to maintain, insure, and manage. Number seven, focus on health. Healthcare may be the toughest cost to control. In today's world, individuals only have a little leverage against the healthcare establishment but you can start by taking good care of yourself first through better diet and exercise. Your health is both a quality of life and a financial issue. The potential cost savings of a healthy lifestyle, especially in your later years, are enormous. If you can't get motivated other ways, think of all the money you'll save being healthy. Eat moderately, eat well, and exercise daily. Physical and mental health are the foundation for enjoying the rest of life. Other goals, including financial goals, don't make much sense without it. A simple path to better health for you and the world is to cultivate free green fun. Anything that involves self-propelled activity on public lands or in public facilities is an excellent candidate. Avoid ongoing membership fees at all costs. Start by walking, hiking, or running. Move on to swimming or road biking. Throw in some team sports if that's your thing. 
or advance to paddling, climbing, or mountain biking, or something even more extreme if you're willing and able. Some of these activities require modest expenses up front, but then cost very little for a lifetime of enjoyment. They'll keep you in good health, minimize impact on the planet, and are hugely fun and exciting. What's not to like? Number eight, leverage generosity. Keep an annual budget in mind for your charitable contributions. Then keep track of individual contributions to ensure you're prioritizing the organizations you value most. It's also helpful to keep track of what you gave in previous years for comparison. Charities, like other direct mail operations, pelt you with numerous solicitations throughout the year. If you don't keep track of your giving, you may find your actions don't match your priorities. I keep a checklist of my currently designated charities next to our junk mail recycling bin. If I get a solicitation from an organization not on the list or one on the list that I've already donated to for the year, it goes into the recycling unopened. There seems to be a higher law of money. Generosity leads to wealth. I know that one of the happiest and most prosperous years of my life was also one when I was the most generous. And I'm not sure which was the cause and which was the effect. They seem to be interrelated. Generously and wisely allocating resources without desperately hanging on to each dollar is a mindset that also leads to recognizing and capitalizing on opportunities for personal prosperity. And it just feels good. You just listened to part two of the post titled Eight Tips for Saving Big and Retiring Earlier by Darrow Kirkpatrick of CanIRetireYet.com. I think reducing expenses without it feeling like deprivation requires a deep mindset shift. One way that I've done this is to practice gratitude for what I do have and to laugh at myself whenever I start to frame minor inconveniences as a hardship. Cooking my own meals is not a hardship. Not having the newest iPhone or driving my older car that cost me $6,000 cash, it's not a hardship. When I would see my consumerist conditioning pop up, I would often laugh at myself and say something like, sounds like a first world problem. So for example, since I got my car, the button on my key fab to pop my trunk has never worked. I guess I could pay to get this fixed, but is it really that much trouble for me to pop the trunk from the button inside the car? This is an example of a first world problem that would have troubled me in the past. I've also learned to enjoy low cost activities as a way to spend my time. One thing that checks a lot of boxes for me is the long distance hiking I do every weekend with my friend, Erin. It usually takes us four to six hours to hike 10 to 14 miles at one of the great trails around Cincinnati. It's a magical time. Being immersed in nature for that long and the physical exertion helps purge a lot of my stress. Aaron and I talk about anything and everything, and I always walk away with new ideas and new energy to implement those ideas. I really appreciate the call out to focus on your health in this article, as it doesn't have to cost a lot of money, but will have a much greater impact on your happiness than unnecessary spending. And that's another episode and weekend of Optimal Finance Daily in the books. Have a happy and safe 4th of July if you're listening in real time. Thank you for your support and for listening every day, including holidays. I'll be back with more posts for you on Monday. So have a great rest of your weekend and I'll catch you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.